This one from a uh, Polish Catholic. Have some questions for you. Ooh, 15 questions. Okay, I'll hurry. Uh, quickly here. Uh, where can I find books about Islam and Catholicism and about Pope John Paul? Uh, I don't know. This is not my field of expertise. I think it is interesting. Someone sent me an article. Uh, where did I put that? Yeah. Uh, in my piling system here. The Bible clearly says, don't add to this book. Do not add to this book, okay? God's word is finished. And yet in the Quran, it refers to the Bible. So in this interesting article, I said, wait a minute now. How can the Quran be a holy book if it says the Bible's a holy book, but the Bible says don't add to this book? Isn't that self-contradictory? Wouldn't Muhammad be contradicting the, himself to say, that he has a new revelation from God if God had said don't add to the book and then he recommends the book that says don't add to this book. Interesting bit of logic there for someone to try to, to work on. I, I'll leave that for somebody else. I got other dragons to slay. Okay, number two. What do you think of Scott Hahn, H-A-H-N, and his arguments for Catholicism? I'm sorry, I don't know Scott or his arguments. Uh, I would be strongly uh, against many things that Catholics teach. I, I could I could support many things they teach the virgin birth etc. But uh, their their method of salvation is purely a works religion and many things they teach I would be very strongly against uh, as far as their doctrine not the people just the doctrine. Uh, number three, do you think uh, Catholicism is the harlot from the apocalypse? I uh, don't know possibly uh, that certainly has some of the the, the earmarks of that. I tell you the guy you need to see on that topic would be. David Daniels at uh, chick.com. He has good stuff on that. Um, who else? There's many, many books on this topic. It's, uh, that's somebody else's dragon to slay. i got enough to do on evolution. Okay, number four. Why do you think the Catholics removed the second commandment? That's not true. Okay, now, I have said several times that the second commandment, don't make any idols, you know, graven images, in, the, in Exodus chapter 20. It's not removed from the Catholic Bible. Okay, I don't think I've ever said that. But if you get a little pamphlet from the Catholic Church, oftentimes they'll say, here are the Ten Commandments, or in little doctrinal booklets and stuff when they teach on this, and it will not have the Second Commandment. Instead, they split the, the Tenth Commandment into two. Uh, don't covet your neighbor's wife, and don't covet your neighbor's you know, uh, property or something. So they, do, so they do leave it out in their, in their teaching and in their booklet, because it is kind of embarrassing to have a commandment that says, don't make a graven image when their church is full of graven images. So that's my take on that, that... Uh, uh, they do they do leave it out of uh, some of their articles and, and things that I've seen. Let's see. I uh, have a friend from, if you have a friend from Poland, please have him translate and you give me a bunch of websites here. I can't do that, possibly. I only know about four Polish words. Yakshamatsha, that kind of stuff. Let's see, verse number five. Why do you think the Roman Catholic Church forbade and harmed people who translated the Bible from Latin? Uh, well, I think it's pretty well historical that they did. Anyone who would translate the Bible into the common language was really given a hard time, like Wycliffe and Tyndale and Martin Luther. And, I mean, there's a long list of people been really severely persecuted or killed for putting the Bible into the, what's called the common language or the, the, uh, the vernacular of the people. I think the reason would be quite obvious. The Catholic Church teaches some things that the Bible is against or does not support, and so they would... Uh, not want people reading their Bible because then they would quit being a Catholic. So I think that's, that, again, somebody else is dragging to slate. There are many good books on that. Where did I see? I think Chick.com has a whole series of books on, on Catholics and their, their teaching. There's, uh, I spoke at a conference once with a guy who that was his full-time ministry, is ministering to Catholics. Uh, the wonderful people. It's, it's the doctrine that I'm against, not the people. It's what they teach. Uh, let's see. Question six. Uh, they faked this is probably a Polish person trying to speak English here. You believe me, your English is much better than my Polish would be. Something. <coughs> Persons because they faked Bible like Luther and Hussite. Sorry, I don't understand the question. Uh, what do you think of penalization of homosexuality, prostitution, and adultery like the ban on mixed beaches like in Singapore? Or the ban on homo parades? What do you think of this quote, Romans 13? Um, well, certainly the Bible's pretty clear about adultery and fornication and homosexuality. I mean, it's just real clear. Some countries, like Singapore, uh, enforce uh, um, some of their laws with uh, caning or beating, as you mentioned here. 
Uh, I think that's a lot cheaper than prison for, and a lot better for everybody involved. Uh, it gives, at least give the guy an option. If you're going to arrest somebody in America, give them the option. We're going to take a cane, we're going to whip you 20 times, or send you to prison for five years. They would all take the caning or the beating. Everybody would. I mean, five years. And it would save a whole bunch of money. And you don't have to say that's cruel and mean. Let the person decide. If you'd rather go to prison for five years, then go. <laughs> but let them decide. Let them make that simple decision. Which one do you want? So I think there certainly needs to be, uh, government has to enforce you know, rules and regulations of some kind. What should, what should the punishment be is really the question. Is it uh, uh, prison? Is, so far, the only string on the fiddle in America is prison, 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 prison. And that string's out of tune. That needs to be shut down. Uh, start your kids early. Uh, teach them the truth. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Thank, uh, uh, I'm a Christian, saved by grace. I've been having a hard time dealing with my sin. I don't feel very worthy of my Lord Jesus. Oh, Herb, I can't help you with that. I don't either, brother. I've been a Christian 46 years, and I'm still um, humbled by the fact that God would take me at all. So if your sin bothers you, good. It should. Mine does, too. You know, my wife has one of those little concave mirrors with uh, um, lights around it for putting makeup on. The closer you get, the more you see every you see every zit in your face when you get up there close to that thing. And the closer you get to the Lord, who's the light of the world, the more problems you're going to see in your own life. So getting closer to the Lord doesn't make you feel more proud. It makes you feel more embarrassed. Uh, and so I think most Christians will, will tell you that's been their experience. The more they read their Bible, the more they pray, the closer they actually get to the Lord, the worse they feel about it. It's, I think it's a way to keep us uh, humble. You know, Cain tried to approach God with his works. God, look what I did for you. Here's my fruit, my vegetables I worked all hard all summer for. And God wouldn't accept it. And most religions are trying to approach God the way Cain did. God, look what I did for you. I did this. I did that. That's the Muslims. Look what I did. I, I blew myself up. I killed all these heathen. God's not going to accept that. It's not what you do for God. It's what Jesus did for you. So the closer you get to the Lord, that's a normal reaction, Herb. That's a good sign if you're feeling really, really unworthy. Because uh, you should. And I, I, I am. <laughs> Believe me. I don't feel worthy of my Lord. Praise God. I don't either. I'm not spreading the word like I should. Boy, hurt me neither. Uh, I think I'm going to be embarrassed Judgment Day when God's going to say, Kent, here's what I gave you. Here's what you could have done, and here's what you did. Now, what happened? I don't know, Lord. I was lazy. I'm sorry. So, please, uh, forgive me. So, I think we should all, we're all going to be embarrassed on that day for not doing what we could have and should have done. He says, I don't feel like I'm a good representative of God. Me neither, Herb. Do the best you can and uh, keep uh, serving Keep serving the Lord. Okay, uh, that didn't help at all, did it? Uh, sorry about that. Yes, I want to encourage you. That's a good sign. A good sign that you don't feel worthy. So, yay. And so we hope to get it out one of these days when my brother straightens up, if that ever happens. Anyway, hope that helps, folks. That's a general overview, the basic picture. What in the world is happening? God created the world. He owns it. He made it. It's his. He can make any rules he wants, and he made the rules. He said, do this, don't do this. He made those rules. He destroyed the world in that big flood in the days of Noah. It's his world. He can wreck it if he wants. And even in his judgment here, he remembered mercy and saved Noah and the family. Probably took him a hundred years to build that boat, and everybody in the world knew about crazy Noah building that thing, and anybody could have gotten on that boat. God provided a way through his judgment, the flood. And Jesus Christ is the only way to get through this coming judgment. If you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you've been forgiven, the judgment of God, the wrath of God, will not fall on you. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 1.10 uh, and 5.9, we are not appointed unto wrath. We will get tribulation. And that's the only way I can make it all fit. So we'll get all that together in the book. But if you're listening to this program today and you're not sure you're going to heaven, what if you died today? I hope you don't, but you might. I might too. Where are you going? You're going to be dead for an extremely long time. I mean, you might want to pack for that trip. You know, you're going to be gone for a while. Where are you going? And this is where, February 9, 1969, my friend said, Kent, if you died today, where would you go? I said, I don't know. He said, well, have you ever sinned? Have you ever broken any of God's laws? Are you a sinner? I said, yeah. He said, well, then you're going to hell. 
I said, well, I don't want to go to hell. He said, well, he said, Jesus died on the cross. His blood will pay for your sin if you'll accept his payment. I said, I'd like that. And so by faith, I believed that Jesus died for me, rose from the dead, and he, Jesus, moved into my heart, in my life, February 9th, 1969. It's like planting a seed. You plant a seed in the dirt. Uh, the dirt is 100% stupid. Dirt knows absolutely nothing. The seed knows how to make the tree. But the seed can't do its job unless the dirt will accept it. So you open up the dirt, drop the seed in, add a little water, and you know the tree grows. I'm the dirt. Jesus is the seed. I invited him in, and something started growing inside 46 years ago. Like, wow, what is going on in there? And he'll do the same for you. You just invite him to come in. Jesus, I'm a sinner. Would you forgive me and save me? And that simple act of faith, it wasn't the prayer that saves you. It's God's answer to the prayer that saves you. You can have a tape recorder pray a prayer. It's, it, does God answer the prayer is the secret. You just are the dirt. Say, Lord, I, I'm nothing. I'm a sinner. I'm wicked. I'm vile. Forgive me and save me. And his blood was put onto my account. And I'm forgiven. So when I stand before God at that great white throne judgment, he's going to open the books and say, Kent Hovind. And all the atheists are going to be, whoa, he's going to get his now. Now we're going to find out what that guy was really like. And the angel's going to say, the book's clear, Lord, nothing here. Hoven, come on in. And the skeptics and scoffers and Hoven haters are going to what do you mean? I, he's a liar, he's a thief, he stole money, he didn't pay his taxes. They're going, to have their, <laughs> they're going to have their long list. Angel's going to say, shut up, I said the book's clear, come in. My sins are gone. I mean, like, gone. And that's amazing. Uh, uh, Matthew 1, 2, 3, 4. Matthew 12, 34, 5, and 6. Talk about every idle word that men shall speak. They shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. God has a record of everything you've ever said, everything you ever thought, and everything you ever did. And if you don't want that record read out loud in front of everybody who ever lived, you better get on your knees and call out for Jesus to save you. That's the only way to get that record clean. Mine's gone. I'd love to stand next to you up there in heaven, and God says, calls your name, says, record clear, come on in. He will clear it out. It's wonderful. It's not that I've never sinned. It's that it's paid for by Jesus Christ. So this is kind of the big picture of history, and I thought about just turning my chalkboard around, having my regular charts, and doing a broadcast, because I have about 4,000 questions to answer that have been sent in. I said, well, the back side of these things... Uh, they showed on the other side, sticking out past my other chart. And I thought, well, somebody's going to say, what's that thing sticking out? That's what it is, my paper chart. We'll work on that later on. Please, if you've not accepted Christ, do so today. And let me know. I I'm sorry, I'm so far behind on emails and phone calls and all that. I'm trying, okay? But if you really, uh, if you want to leave a quick message, Hannah is such a blessing to me. She's just a young lady in North Carolina that wants to help do volunteer secretarial work. Get a hold of her at bountifully at, at mail.com. And tell her, hey, I got saved. I gave my heart to the Lord. That's the purpose of my ministry, my existence in life, is not to make money. It's not to get rich. It's to get people into the kingdom. Everything here is going to burn. Everything you work for all of your life is going to burn, too. Don't do that. Invest it in the heavenly kingdom. Hope that helps. Thank you so much.